I'd like to give you an example of using stochastic gradient descent in the scikit-learn uh, domain. So let's transition over to our Python environment. So, so here, here I'm setting up all of the, the data that we need. Uh, in this case, I'm just being very specific about which fold we want. And one of the tools that scikit-learn provides is something called uh, SGD regressor. And this takes a variety of parameters. Um, one uh, parameter is max iter. So that's the maximum number of steps that it's going to, uh, to proceed uh, along. It also has a tolerance. Uh, tolerance is uh, compared against the magnitude of the gradient that's being computed. And if that gradient magnitude drops to a very small value below tolerance, then, uh, then the algorithm will stop early. It won't go to the full number of iterations. I'm going to set penalty to none for right now. We'll, we'll talk about penalties here uh, in a few lectures. You turn on early stopping. Um, the last parameter is called eta. This is our learning rate. I'm going to set that to uh, 10 to the minus 4 here. So that is the, the alpha symbol uh, in the drawing that we did. So, th so there, SGD regressor actually has a whole bunch of other parameters. I encourage you to look at the documentation. We'll talk some more about those parameters here in a moment, though. But let's go ahead and fit our model to our input. In six and out six. Uh, this parameter is not called eta. It's called eta zero. There are some other parameters as well. OK, so, so we've now created our instance of our regressor. We fit the model. And now we can ask what the predictions are. And again, we're going to use the data that we just trained on. Now we're going to uh, predict uh, what uh, the shoulder is going to be doing as a function of that neural data. Execute that. And now we can uh, look at the predictions. And, and so there we go. Um, uh, in practice, this is not quite as good as what we saw before. We might be able to fix that here in a moment. Um, the green, again, if we squint, is nominally following what, what the red curve is doing. Let's, let's try and make an adjustment to our parameters, see if we can improve this. Um, I'm going to set max iteration to, from uh, 1,000 to, to 10,000 and see if that uh, helps here. So we might have stopped a little bit too early. Uh, we're still, uh, our, our predictions are still uh, a bit off there. What, what's happening in this scenario as compared to uh, the linear regression is that we're doing uh, early termination. If we let this go long enough, it, it would actually do uh, better in, in the predictions. Let's make one other adjustment to our model. This learning rate, I, I have it set pretty conservatively. So let's bump up the learning rate by an order of magnitude. So now we're at 10 to the minus 3. And let's see how well we do here. OK, so, so in this case, now comparing to the figure that we had, uh, green is tracking red uh, quite a bit better uh, than it was before. So, so, so the issue there was that our step size was not uh, long enough. Uh, and by bumping up the step size uh, by an order of magnitude, we, we actually did a better job of finding the, the global minimum there. So let's look at how well this model does with uh, fold one of the data. So here we're extracting the, uh, the fold one uh, details and then asking model six how it, how it does with the, that neural data. And I already have the plot code in place there. Oops, we did not. I intended to look at seconds 170 through 180. There we go. All right, so, so in, in this particular case, we're, we're matching the red line relatively well. 
Um, there's still some places where the green line overshoots or undershoots, but what we're doing okay. This the result is not really substantially different than what we saw with the uh, linear regressor. And and since they're optimizing the the same thing, that mean squared error, we're th this is to be uh, expected. So one of the things that we can actually do with uh, with this gradient descent approach is that we can actually, in, instead of waiting for the model to get all the way to the, the end through all of those iterations, we can actually ask what happens from iteration to the next iteration. So that'll be our next uh, example here. 